Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy from the Freak Mail Tayo. And this is Jack from emails that sell.com. All right, today it's a teardown. Okay, uh, as we begin this teardown episode, I want to immediately say that I already feel bad <laughs> because the email subject line says, Jeremy and Jack, your podcast is one of the best, exclamation point. And normally that is... So, so yeah, it should make me feel great, but um, you'll see why I'm not so excited to tear this one down. Yeah, for me, it was just like one of those other emails I keep on receiving every day. <laughs> 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 I see the humor there. No, but typically this subject line... It's a good one. ...is setting things up. This email should kill it. And it's been sent to podcasts at Quick Melotayo. So, you know, perfect. Yeah. 10 out of 10 so far. All right. By the way, Jeremy and I both got this, which is the danger when you email to generic emails like marketing at or podcast at. Yeah, that's right. We could probably talk about that a little bit afterwards so people get to understand first the cold email we received. Yeah, I was just going to say it gave both of us an opportunity to flag it as spam, but I don't think either one of us did that in this case, right? No, we didn't. Not yet. Okay. So shall we dive in? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Hey, Jeremy and Jack. I know my name is as familiar to you as, and then there's a bunch of Chinese letters, as Chinese letters are to a non-Chinese speaking person. So let me quickly introduce myself. I'm name, marketing specialist from company. This means I write blog posts and funny emails for a living. That being said, I recently published an article on 41 best sales podcasts every sales pro should listen to weekly, and it's hyperlinked. And the reason why I'm messaging you is that I included cold email outreach in the roundup. It's on the 23rd position, parentheses, random order. I hope you're happy with the mention. If not, please tell me why and I'll make changes. Also, assuming you're happy with the credits, I will highly thank Mount Everest. Appreciate it if you share the article with your audience. Okay, no more busying you. Wishing you a great week. Name, P.S., all those Chinese characters is a Chinese word for Nike's just do it. All righty. Whew. Yeah, longer one. All right, so Jack, I think you should kick things off. Let's go with the, well, actually the first line, you know, hey, Jeremy and Jack. Very good. I like that. I mean, that isn't listed in podcast at quickmail.io, which is what he emailed. So they did some research. I'm a fan. Yeah, me too. It's like so far, like I'm convinced someone is reaching out to us. Yep. Good stuff. Okay. Intro. I know my name is as familiar to you as Chinese characters to a non-Chinese person. So let me quickly introduce myself. Eh, I don't know. I mean, it's funny. It's funny. Uh, I'll give him that. But is this fluff or did it set the tone up nicely for you? For me, it was fluff. It was a bit forced, but fair enough. You know, I, I like I give them the benefit of the doubt. I read the first thing. It was reaching out perfectly and so on. So it's like, okay, nice rumble, you know. Yeah, but actually, if you say subject line, Jack and Jeremy, your podcast is one of the best, and your email says, hey, Jack and Jeremy, I'm going to give you some leniency to ramble about yourself for a line or two. I really will. That's right. Okay, and the next one, maybe some more fluff. I'm name, marketing specialist from company. This means I write blog posts and funny emails for a living. Well, yeah, get to the point. That's, that's sort of what I'm thinking. But I do, I do really like his tone, though. Yeah, this line was like, now I'm like lost. Is he actually writing me to compliment us and then do something? Or is it to talk about him? So I was like slightly puzzled yeah. on this line. And I started to get my guards going back up. Is it safe to say that both of these lines should have been deleted and it would have made the email better? I think it's safe to say yes for me. Okay. Uh, specifically. Yeah. Because I think there was like a lot of extra lines that actually lost the momentum that he gained. He had like an amazing momentum at the beginning. And suddenly it's just like, I'm wondering where this leads to. And, you know, just losing steam here. So it continues. That being said, I recently published this article on, and then article title. And the reason why I'm messaging you is that I included cold email outreach in the roundup. It's 23rd position, random order. I thought that was cool. Oh, you thought it was cool. That's an interesting one. Yeah. So what really pissed you off? Okay. <laughs> so, much. so let me ask you this, Jeremy. Did you happen to click on the link? I did not. You did not. And that's why you're not annoyed with this email. Oh, tell me. Actually... Just let's see how long it takes. Just click the link for us, and uh, you could do Command F and type in cold email outreach. All right, let me, let me open. And as you do that, I want you right below the screenshot of our podcast. There's a 
bold section called Topics Covered. Would you please read those to the audience? I actually, I did go to the website. I just didn't click on the link. So I read that exactly. And basically, Jack is sending us to a, a list of effectively all those podcast uh, things. And each podcast got their own small section. And before the section starts with some personal, I would say, comments, there is some info or description about the podcast. So we got average duration, 38 minutes. Jack, we really need to do a better job at, you know, squeezing things under 30 minutes. That was my thinking, actually, when I read that. Episode frequency weekly. So far, so good. But then Jack got pissed off with topic covered. Amazon FBA. Did we actually ever talk about like Amazon FBA? Not once, not ever. I don't think so. I do have some clients using cold email for Amazon FBA, so that may actually be an interesting future topic. But then, okay, so, okay, I don't know, maybe. Then let's look at the second topic covered, Facebook ads and (laughs) and (laughs) e-commerce. It's just like, I think that, I mean, that's a mistake here for sure. But the fact that it was such a, a huge mess up showed me that, all right, this guy, though, really a humorous writer, yeah. very working the fox and the crow, dropping a lot of compliments. It's automatically ingenuine. I don't think he really has ever listened to our show. He had mm. just had his VA put this list together and not once did he, I mean, if he managed the process, this totally killed it because when I read this, I knew, okay, well, this is just a you know, a totally outsourced thing and this guy's probably never listened to a single episode. And it was a real bummer because everything else was nice. Yeah, that's sad. I, I kind of get what you're thinking here. Honestly, to me, when this is like once mistakes like that, I'm like thinking, okay, that guy's just being probably cramming up lots of description and so on. And it was like a, a bad copy paste. So I would more come on the lenient part of thing. But the line itself about, you know, that being said, I recently published an article on XYZ. It means like, oh, okay, so... Maybe it wasn't just to send me a praise email. It was actually to get something from me. And like you, I felt a little bit cheated on that side, I would say. Yeah. But you know what really pissed me off, actually, is that that person reached out to us and said he really loved our podcast. He's like, you know, lots of big praise about it. And he said, you own position 23. And that's really what pissed me off. Yeah. It's like, either you send like a super cool, great cool email and then you're position one, two or three, but 23, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and then Prountis is like random order. It's just like, then why don't you just put me first then? You know, it's just like weird. Uh, I don't know. Of course. That's what pissed me off. There's more than just the email itself that can ruin the chances of getting a reply. Like the failure to accurately describe our podcast on the link that you know, he was trying to get a, a link for, you know, it just showed me that there was no real honesty there, even though it definitely sounded like he was a huge fan when I don't believe that. <laughs> I broke your heart. Yeah, a little bit. So let's keep going. This is a teardown. It says, I hope you're happy with the mention. If not, please tell me why and I'll make changes. Also, assuming you're happy with the credits, I will highly thank Mount Everest. Appreciate it if you share it with your audience. Okay, no more busying you. Wishing you a great week. Great. Anything else on, like, where's the CTA? Let's talk about that for a second. Oh, that's a good point. I actually stopped reading after it's on the 23rd position, random order. I'm not joking. I actually stopped reading because I feel like, okay, I'm seeing through now. I know what it is. Put swipe folder for cold emails done. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't even consider that there is a missing call to action, honestly, somewhere. Right. It's buried. It really is. It's a softer CTA. I think it's in this one. It says, assuming you're happy with the credits, I will highly appreciate it if you share the article with your audience. So I guess that's the call to action, but it's not what I would call a direct, clear ask. I'm wondering, let's get out of our bashing mentality and into our improving dialogue here. If he had just sent this email and stopped right at, uh, hey, love the podcast, keep it up, guys, and just ended it there. You know, that's what I was about to propose. And actually, this is not, totally correct. I would probably even go further. And I'll say, guys, I really love your podcast. I'd love to put it on my list of favorite podcasts page. Would you actually appreciate me doing that? Or would that be okay if I do that? Or is it okay if I write up a little description that you can review to make sure it's accurate for the people checking out the post? Yeah. What if that person would have said, 
great fan of the show and so on and so on. I'm actually doing like a list of all the podcasts I really love and follow myself. Do I get your permission to put it on my list? Yeah. And maybe do that small ask about sharing it on Twitter. It would mean a world to me if you also help promoting my website, you know, sort of like reciprocity type of approach going that way. Uh, not bad, but I'm wondering if that's even necessary. I think if there was a glowing article, well, let's say our podcast was much higher up on the list. You know, if it was about sales podcasts, I, I might even just off the bat say, hey, by the way, if you're into our podcast, you probably like this resource given here. It's got other casts that you may want to listen into. I'm wondering actually if his strategy, instead of saying like, hey, 23rd position random order, I put it at first. And then after that, as you keep on adding, they always get it added on the first place. <laughs> so you can <laughs> <contact> more people. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. That you would have worked. Do that. Yeah. So basically, I think we're in agreement that a huge potential in this email, the approach is spot on. But as we go deeper into this email, I think there's some ingenuity that actually pops up yeah. that you and I have trouble to digest and therefore kind of like waste the entire effort. Is that fair to say? It is. And I have another thing to add when we get to the last email, but um, okay, that's correct. Let's go and see the follow-ups then. All right. Follow-up. Subject line is pretty strange because it's follow-up re colon your podcast on the list of the best. It's weird because that wasn't the first subject line. The first subject line was Jeremy and Jack, your podcast is one of the best. So there would be no need for a re. And then you also wouldn't put follow up, you know? So, okay, whatever. It says, hey, Jeremy, he's dropped Jack. Yeah, <laughs> he's dropping Jack. I think it's a smart guy here. <laughs> I used to be cool. <laughs> I used to be so cool. Okay, it's a second email you get from me in one week. So I bet you must be thinking, is he trying just to clatter my inbox? Not at all. And let me tell you why. A few days ago, I emailed you to say that I included your podcast in my newest article on article name. Yours is on the 23rd position, random order. This email, of course, is not to make you check it out at all costs. On the other hand, I would highly appreciate it if you could take a look to review the credits. If you're happy with them, that's great. If not, please tell me why and I'll make changes. I know that Inbox, besides the empty sink, is a place that is most prone to get filmed in the shortest time. Thus, I hope this email will come in helpful, assuming you just missed the last one and won't be just another piece of the mess. Wish you a great day, Signature. All right, general thoughts before we pick it apart? It's a classical bump email, and I'm just wondering, what does he really want from me You know, at yeah. this stage? It's not that clear. I mean, it even says, if you're happy with them, that's great. If not, tell me why and I'll make changes. So. CTA work. I mean, look, maybe he's saying I'm going hard reciprocity and I'm leaving it mostly to them to take the action I want from them. Yeah, I'm not convinced by that. I think really a clear CTA would have really helped. You know, something like I would really appreciate if you retweet this link or if you, you know, share this link with whatever. But here it's like, it's too vague. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm happy I read it. I'm happy I don't care. And then, so what? I don't know what to do. Your prospects should never say so what when they read your email, by the way. All righty, let's keep going. So diving in here, there is more fluff at the top and bottom. Specifically, it's a second email you get from me in one week, so I bet you must be thinking he's trying just to clutter my inbox. Not at all. Let me tell you why. All that should be deleted. Next, at the very bottom, I know that the inbox beside the empty sink, blah, blah, blah. Really nothing for us in those two places. I think what he's trying to do, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, is trying to lighten the mood and, you know, just insert some jokes, which jokes is always like a double-edged sword. It could actually work for you or against you. It depends yeah. on how the other person receives the jokes, right? So it's always difficult. But at what cost is this humor added lines of, uh, let's say, lightening the mood coming at? Honestly, I agree with you. It doesn't add much, especially if I have a buried inbox. It's not really where my mindset is. So at this stage, I don't really like the intro, of course, but I do love the, let me tell you why, because here I'm thinking like, okay, finally he's going to spit it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it doesn't. So it's a bit frustrating here. You know, and again, we are position 23rd, so he didn't make any effort yet to even improve, you know, our positioning. Yeah, so I was like, nah, why would I make any effort to improve my reply? <laughs> yeah. And so... Um... We've got one more to review here. Let's get to it. 
It says, can you please check if that's right? Question mark. That's the subject line. Hey, Jeremy and Jack. For some reason, I'm back on the... Uh, You're back in shape. I'm back on the, the <laughs> signature here. It says, I know, third follow-up. Really, you annoying little. And then uh, there's a bunch of symbols uh, indicating a swear word. Yep. So... Swear word. to get shampoo and yeah. clean up this email here. But uh, okay, so it says, I'll keep it as... TLDR as possible. What does that mean? Oh, it's too long to read or something like that. That's really what it means. It's basically a short... Here is the short version, like... Okay, short version. I recently put out the list of... And then again, and cold email is just on the 23rd position, random order. Please let me know if you're happy with the mention. If not, I'm going to, to apply changes to make it as accurate as possible. Have a great week. All right, I have to take this one first. It's a repeat and... You know how we feel about fluff and just doing basic bump emails. But the worst part, and Jeremy, you don't know this yet, but the call to action was, please let me know if you're happy with the mention. If not, I'm going to apply changes to make it as accurate as possible. Over two weeks ago, I messaged him that the tags were incorrect on the article and to please change oh. it to cold email. And it's still Amazon FBA, e-commerce and Facebook ads. So really, yeah, we should start rebranding the show so it reflects you know, a bit more <laughs> yeah. what we're talking about here. On the next episode of Cold Email Average for <laughs> Amazon FBA enthusiasts. <laughs> All right. It's a bummer. Yeah, I mean, it's classical, you know, bumpy mail and it's the second one. And now it starts to be, you know, kind of bland. But I'm actually quite happy that now I understand what his call to action is. And it's in the subject line. Can you please check if it's right? He actually wants me to reply. Yes, it's right. Or no, it's not. Now I get what the CTA is. So it's okay. I don't really know what's up with, you know, dropping you in the first bump email and then back, you know, on the second bump email. It's just... What's the lesson here? What's like the big idea before we go on to our fourth and final email to tear down from a, a totally different sender? So, I mean, amazing Fox and Crow. Yeah, really, yeah. Like really spot on and... I'm still wondering what that person wants in the end. I was very close actually to reply to this person like, wow, we're 23rd. Yeah. But, you know, once I understood like, okay, um, he's just trying to get something else, then I wasn't so keen on, you know, communicating anymore and decided to check if he's going to send some replies here. So I just, you know, left it open. All right. So the takeaway for this person, if they wanted us to take this call to action, make it clear. And I think if they would have just done a, a better job living up to the idea that they are a fan of the podcast, like they portrayed in the email and actually just tagged it correctly, as opposed to something totally off the mark that told me they never listened to a single episode. If they would have done those two things, I'm pretty sure they would have gotten what they wanted. Yeah, I think the lesson here is compliment alone don't, won't get you there. Yeah. Right. But it buys you something. I, I really gave him uh, all the time to read the, the rest of the email when typically I wouldn't have. So there you go. Shall we move on to the last cold email of the show? Yeah. Just uh, hold on. Let me grab some popcorn and uh, let's enjoy the rest. All right. So subject line, valuable addition to your blog. And this is keeping with the theme of link building. So if you're looking for SEO, hopefully this helps. Hello, space, comma. Like there was a first name there that should have been there, but wasn't. I was going through your article on email marketing here, emails at sell.com slash 57 email marketing tips. I have an article on email blast, which I think will add more value to your article. A lot of people get it wrong when it comes to properly executing an email blast. We have covered this topic in great detail in our article. And then there's the full text of the WP beginner article. In our opinion, making proper email segmentation and creating a targeted email campaign makes all the difference. Let me know what you think. Regards, PR team, WP beginner. Oh, so interesting, this one. And I guess yeah, I'm going to jump here and I'm going to say it's interesting because it's almost the opposite of the fox on a crow. <laughs> it very <laughs> much is. is. It is. Hey, you did a piss poor job. Sorry, Jack, yeah. on this article. You know, it could be good, but... You know, right. Uh, it, if you wanted to suck less, you should have talked about email blasts. <laughs> Luckily, I'll save you this time. There you go. Approach. Let's give them, I don't know, D minus on approach. Yeah, I think that's fair. At least they knew I write about email marketing. That's definitely one strong point. At the same time, 
how hard is it for a website like yours that got your name on all the blog articles to just put the name instead of, you know, a space? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. That's, uh, you're talking about dropping the merge tag at yeah. 100%. So we will soon stop seeing things like this, Jeremy, because I don't believe many people are replying to this low caliber kind of emails. And therefore, they will slowly be phased out and replaced with these high personalization, low volume kind of emails. It's very interesting how small thing can tip, you know, an email between being great or being very poor. And in this case, for example, it's a massive mistake. He pointed finger and say, you know, your article suck, you know, let me help you out, right, insert right. my own stuff, that's gold. <laughs> but, you know, if he used like the first approach or the approach of the first emails that we reviewed, like, you know, Amazing Fox and Crow and saying, really, I dig your article on your blog. I think it was like really amazing. I was thinking of things that I could personally find was potentially missing or, or would add more, even more value to your blog article. And I was wondering if you even consider, you know, something about email blast, for example, you know, that would be something that you would be probably more open to then engage a conversation. But the other approach would be to simply be very upfront about it and just say like, hey, man, you know, really dig your content. I'd be super proud in you pointing to my website and then I can reciprocate so we can, are you in into exchanging links, for example, yeah. that would be very upfront. And you come as well with a compliment about like, you're only doing it because you really love his content. So you feel really good about doing that. Yeah. And then would you consider effectively reciprocating? And if not, then that's fine. And I guess, you know, coming out with this angle is, is not as threatening, first of all, it's more, you know, on the compliment side. And at the same time, it's like offering some really good value straight away. You know, are you interested in, you know, boosting up your SEO? Right, right. I mean, honestly, if someone comes like very low key like that to me, I'll appreciate more than actually thinking like, oh, he's complimenting it. And in fact, it's very ingenious. In this case, he's not even complimenting you. So it's very easy to, <laughs> to, to make the call. But you know what I mean? Would you actually just reply to something like that? Would you actually consider it more? I think I would if they phrase it in a way where, hey, here's sort of this kind of simple email. You let me know and I'll put your link on and we can do a little link share. And we both get a little bit more traffic. Everyone's happy. I'm pretty sure I would do that. Yeah. I mean, of course, I would look at the site and make sure that they're <laughs> not a brand new or putting crap content on. Hack your website, you know. <laughs> yeah. But WP Beginner, I would be pleased to have a backlink from them. There you go. And good advice for a new approach that would have worked. But just a final note on this kind of email getting phased out. I think it's just going to come down to the economics of writing this kind of high volume email. I mean, it is really cheap to send an email like this from a just a, a dollar perspective. It doesn't cost a whole lot to generate the emails and send this to a thousand people. But eventually, two things will happen. The response will keep going down on these cheaper cold emails. And the results for people who actually take time and personalize and add the crazy but essential elements to get a, a reply. That's what's going to get rewarded in the marketplace. And just the, the attention will get shifted toward the more high quality kind of outreach activities. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the podcast teardown for 2021, we're seeing a lot more high caliber emails for the ones that actually land in the inbox and actually the, the activities that people are getting wise and starting out because they're working. Yeah, can't wait to see that. Yeah, let's uh, let's level up this cold email game, shall we? And and uh, you're listening. We're we're counting on you too. And by the way, we haven't asked in a while. Give us five stars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Send us an iTunes review or something. We get a kick out of reading them together before we podcast. All right, all right, Jack. Great tear down, Jeremy. Yeah, thanks. All right, great tear down. Hey, cold emailer. Yeah, you. If you got some value from this episode, give us a high vibe by sharing a two-sentence review on iTunes. Or Stitcher, or TuneIn, that works too. It's a quick way to help other growth-minded folks like us find this podcast. So they can send awesome emails. And make everyone's inbox a better place. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>